good afternoon and welcome back to Questioning Sense with me, Matt. Okay, um, not a bad day for October. Um, just coming from work, um, quite a busy day. So I thought I'd do a review. Now, lately I've done quite a few, or certainly a few reviews where I've sort of featured lots of different fragrances. And I quite like doing that sort of review. Um, and from a, when I'm, I mean, when I sort of, you know, go through YouTube and look at other reviews, I'm a big fan of people just reviewing one fragrance per review. Now I understand if time was money, when someone's doing a multiple review, you do get a bit more bang for your buck. But every now and again, you come across a fragrance that deserves its own billing. So today we're gonna be looking at one fragrance and it has popped up um, a couple of times in sort of, you know, where I've talked about various, you know, seasons for, uh, Francis for autumn, fall, that kind of thing. It gets a mention in that. Now I've been. It's, it's actually from Javoy Baris, and I bought it from the Javoy store in London. And I bought a few. Well, I've got a few from from Javoy. Um, I have L'Enfant Terrible, which also deserves its own review. We'll come back to that one. We have Jeroboam's Vespero, although it is made by Jeroboam. They are pretty much Javoy, and this one has its own review already. So have a look down below. And today we're going to be looking at this, which is Javoy Paris Incident Diplomatique, or Diplomatic Incident, or I think it is actually just Incident Diplomatique. Okay, so first off, we'll have a quick look at the bottle. Really, really heavy, solid glass. Um, beautiful uh, cap, which absolutely wastes time. Now, I have a glass table in front of me, and... Literally, I think if I drop this on the glass table, it's a toughened glass table as well, it would probably break it, or certainly crack it anyway. Um, although, as I mentioned earlier, I am wearing it, I will spray a little bit more, not too much, but a little bit more purely for the purposes of the review. So there you go. Great sprayer. Um, the bottles are functional. They're not the most exciting, but the more time you look at them, the more time you spend with them, the more interesting they become. They've got this wonderful curved shape to them. Um, and they, they photograph really well. I don't know if you're aware, but Questioning Sense, um, we do have an Instagram page, and what I try and do is every day I'll put my um, scent of the day on there and talk a little bit about it and just sort of have a bit of banter within the community and that sort of thing. So if you are on Instagram, have a look at us um, at Questioning. Just question, it's not just it's not Questioning Sense with Matt, it's just Questioning Sense. Um, but yeah, please join us on Instagram and you know we'll carry on the fun there. Okay, so let's talk a bit more about Incident Diplomatic, and we'll go through the notes and then explain a bit more about it, what I think of it, how I get on with it, um, what it's gonna be appropriate for. Well, this came out, uh, as I say, Je Voy Pace um, re reduced, released this in 2017, um, and it's got, it's got a bit of a reputation um, and I found out about it. I was in a Facebook group and the question came up, does anybody have a fragrance that if all other fragrances didn't exist, they could just wear one fragrance forever? And one guy said um, he, would, he would pick this. And I didn't know anything about it at that time. And it caused a few oohs and a few ahs because uh, this is quite divisive. There's a lot of people who really love it and a lot of people admire it and a lot of people just don't like it at all. I don't understand that because although it's it's quite an interesting fragrance, it's in some respects quite a beastly fragrance. I don't honestly, to my nose, there's nothing there to dislike. Um, but you know there are some powerful notes in there, and you've got to like the notes to 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 you know to get on with the fragrance, and I get that. So at the top you have mandarin orange, that's your that's your top. In the middle you have Haitian vetiver, you have Java vetiver oil and you have nutmeg, and in the base you have patchouli and sandalwood. So, you know, it's not the most complex note listings there at all. Um, and I'll be quite honest with the Mandarin Orange, that's, if this was sort of like a, a theatrical production, um, the Mandarin, the Orange, it's kind of just like a warm up act. It doesn't really have much to do with this at all. It kind of appears and it goes very, very quickly. It's not, um, you know, you, you would not, if you smelt this, you would not associate this with, with orange at all, really, apart from that brief moment when it, when, it, when it opens, and then it kind of disappears. A lot of fuss is made on Fragrantica and a lot of other places about having the two types of vetiver, you know, the dueling vetivers, as it were. Um, 
Now, I can tell you, and I just did, that there are two types of vetiver in this. There's a Haitian vetiver and a Java vetiver oil, as I've just said. To my nose, I don't know. I'd love to be able to say, yes, I can pick up on this uh, Haitian vetiver, and yes, the Java vetiver oil, and I can't, I'm sorry. Um, it just smells like a glorious, glorious vetiver. It's beautiful. The nutmeg is there, and it just gives it a bit of a spicy edge to it. Obviously, vetiver and patchouli are very good friends, and this is a slightly almost medicinal patchouli. And then it all sits on this wonderful sandalwood base. And the sandalwood is a beautiful one too. It's, uh, it's thick, it's luxurious, it's creamy. This whole fragrance is luxurious. It's, some people sort of say, it's an 80s powerhouse. I, um, I, I will agree with the powerhouse totally. I think it's, it, it nods itself to vintage fragrances and it takes its inspiration from vintage fragrances, but I think it's quite a modern fragrance and I think it does its own thing perfectly well. I'm sure there's loads of sort of uh, fragrance historians out there that will kind of reel off loads of old classics that it reminds them of or, or, or it is. And maybe it does, I don't know. I don't profess to know everything and I certainly don't profess to smell, you know, lots and lots of vintage fragrances because I haven't. I mean, I'm what? I'm in my mid 40s. And, uh, you know, I've been wearing fragrances since I was sort of in the teens, but very generic ones. You know, it's only in the last sort of few years, four or five years, that I've got really interested in more niche and more exciting fragrances. I've gone down the path of, you know, polo green for a long, long time. So I wore um, Amen for a while and then, you know, various other things. And then it's like, then I think I found the Ventus for five or six years or maybe four or five years ago. And then it kind of exploded from there. So I don't have that massive back catalogue in, in my head of, of vintage fragrances. So maybe there are some out there that, that, it, that it plays with. I don't know. But to me, it's um, it's an earthy, and the, the, the vetiver sort of makes it quite earthy and woody, and the patchouli is very earthy, so you do get that nutmeg, little spiciness. Um, it almost, it's almost, almost feels musky. I don't think there's any musk in it, but you get a sort of a musky vibe from it because it is, to me, very, very masculine. This is the boardroom personified. It's a wonderful, wonderful frag. And what it also does is it 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 just, it, it beasts. And I didn't think it it, it, it does, but it, it really, really does. I mean, I've mentioned in another video that I've had an overspraying incident with this because I didn't really think it was, it was as punchy or as potent as it was. And, um, you know, one of my colleagues did ask me quite kindly, Although she did say it smelt nice, she did ask if I'd left any cologne in the bottle. Her words, not mine. So, um, yeah, be a bit careful with it. Um, what I would say, though, because in fragrance, there's always that little bit of confusion with uh, sillage versus projection. Um, and into my sort of non-educated mind, I look at sillage as the fragrance that when you walk into a room, you walk around the room and you walk out the room, what stays in the room is your sillage, your scent trail. That's, the, that's the, 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 the smell that follows you around. Projection is what comes from you, which comes out from here to here, you know, here. Depending on the fragrance, it depends how much it projects, but they are different and there's a lot of debate as to whether people prefer sillage or they prefer a fragrance that projects. And, you know, I think they're both as, both as important as each other, but some fragrances definitely have a, um, a much stronger sillage and some fragrances are, you know, are definitely, you know, more projecting. This kind of muddies the water a bit, um, and I'll tell you for why. The sillage on this is, is phenomenal, and it really, really projects as well. So at some points, you kind of, the two are becoming one. Um, it would be easy for me to say that this puts you in a scent bubble, but a bubble by its very definition has an edge. You know, if you visualize someone in a bubble, you will see the person and then you'll see the bubble around them. Um, and there is no edge with this. When this, in the first three hours, it's, it's projecting like nothing, and it, belts out so I wouldn't say you're in a scent bubble I'd say you're in a scent fog a scent fog which drifts off and floats around and that way you've got you know a fairly decent explanation of really really strong projection and really really strong sillage this has both especially for the first three hours um performance is really really off the hook it's uh, a fabulous performer as I say I've just come in from work and it's still I can still smell it everywhere and I do spray quite a lot but I don't overspray this anymore. Um, I'm quite conservative with my application um, because it does belt out. It's an absolute banger. Um, it's just, I love it. I think um, it is definitely for the more mature man. And I know I keep saying this, I do apologize, 
someone younger, someone more confident will be able to wear this because it smells bloody great. Um, I think it's a very masculine fragrance and I know a lot of women like to wear masculine fragrances and if you're female and you're watching this and you like a masculine fragrance, this could well be up your street. Um, what I would say though is just generally, I mean I love this, I think everyone should wear it or could wear it, um, but I do know that a lot of people don't like it. Some some you know people I really respect as well have accused it of being a bit too beastly, um, so maybe it's not going to be for you. Strongly, strongly recommend trying it and I know Javoy do, if you can't get into one of their stores, um, please look at the sample sets or, or try and get a sample of it because you're missing out if you've not tried it. Um, I think this could, you know, when I was talking about um, red tobacco and sort of saying looking for a tobacco based signature scent and I couldn't wear red tobacco every day, although I have worn it a lot, I just couldn't do it, it's a bit too much. This, despite being kind of in that same world in terms of performance as red tobacco, I could wear this every day. It's not as demanding of my, uh, it doesn't overwhelm me in the same way red tobacco does, but it still performs in that kind of way. And obviously they smell nothing alike, don't get me wrong. Um, I'm just using red tobacco as an example for performance because this really, really is a super duper performer. Um, please, please try it. And I mean, if you if you are in London and you've not been into Javoy or you're, you know, you're in Paris, I don't know where the other stores are, um, to be honest. Please go in because they're, they're so enthusiastic in there. Um, you know, if you're going to give people your money, uh, your hard earned cash for fragrances, isn't it? I think it's a bit nicer to give it to someone that um, is really, really interested in making sure that you're getting the right scent for you and you're getting the scent you want. And, you know, everything I've reviewed on, on, on questioning scents has been stuff that I've bought. No one sent us anything. We're not in anyone's pocket. We're not sponsored in any shape, way, shape or form. And it's just nice for me to be able to say to the, you know, to about Joe Boy, especially the, um, uh, the one in Mayfair in London. Thank you so much for looking after us when we come in because you know your customer service and stuff like that is phenomenal. Really, really good. Just been given a coffee as you come in and been able to peruse lots of really exciting scents and talking about scents and fragrances with people that really care and really are passionate about it is a delight for me. It's one of my favourite things to do. Um, you know, obviously your family life's the most important thing and then your hobbies kind of come somewhere down the line in priorities. But when you do get some time to, uh, to devote to your hobby, it's nice to be in a place where you know, you're appreciated and you're surrounded by people that have the same sort of levels of passion as you do. So yeah, real bigs up, big up um, to the uh, staff at Joe Boy for being so attentive and knowledgeable. But listen, um, thank you very much for your time. I'm sorry if I've taken up too much of it talking about all one fragrance, but this is a true joy. Um, I really, really hope you do get a chance to sample it because I can't say enough good words about it. And as you probably gathered, I'm a bit smitten by it. Um, I think this is always gonna be in my rotation. It's certainly, coming into its own in the autumn and I think in the winter it's going to shine as well. Maybe not one for the summer because it is that kind of foggy, heavy, um, sort of quite dry fragrance that um, might not do so well in the heat. But um, any occasion, really, really good for, for formal attire, can easily dress it down casually as well. Go light with your spraying. Listen, get hold of it, try it and have some fun. Thank you very much for your time and we'll see you on the next review very soon. Cheers. Bye!